Welcome to another little flipped assignment. Uh, so this is called Types of Reactions, and uh, this will help us in predicting. Um, so again, take notes on this. You can start and stop at this recording whenever you want. It shouldn't be any more than five minutes, and there will be a question at the end. So here it goes. Uh, so uh, we break. There's millions of chemical reactions, and these are some general. There's lots of different ways to break them down into, but we're going to sort of put them in a different category. A uh, couple rules. Every reaction tells a story. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's all based on experimental evidence. Um, we always start and end. you got to have the correct symbols or else it will never balance. And again, it's always based on experimental evidence. Okay. This is everybody's favorite. Uh, combustion. How do we know if it's combustion? Pretty simple. Um, one of the ways you can always identify a combustion reaction is the reactants will always have um, some type of fuel plus O2 gas. Then it will yield something. And in this case, hydrocarbons. Most of the fuels that we use in our gas tanks plus O2 will always give carbon dioxide and water. Uh, but the key there is O2. Um, that's a huge one, and this is the one that every, everyone likes because it you know, gives off a lot of fire. The next one is synthesis, and when we synthesize something, we make something. The general format is A plus B usually yields C. Two simple things combine to form something that's more complex. Usually, it's two elements combined to form as reactants make a compound as a, as a product. For instance, magnesium plus oxygen would produce or yield magnesium oxide. Um, someone's going to say, well, wait a minute. If we have oxygen, elemental oxygen, which is O2, couldn't we also call this combustion? And the answer is yes. Um, so this could be really put in two categories. Now, the next one, which is the opposite of syn synthesis, where we take one simple thing and then break it down into two or more, is decombustion. <clears throat> Again, you have something like C goes breaks down to yield uh, A and B. Um, for instance, one that we just did, um, sodium bicarb, which is you know used in uh, like baking soda, breaks down into water, carbon dioxide, and sodium carbonate. So if you see anything where there's only one compound on the left side and then an arrow, you know it has to be a, de a decomposition. Um, Next, single displacement. This always has some element plus a compound reacts to form a compound and an element, and they basically switch places. So, for instance, my wife and I, which would be the compound, goes to a dance. Brad Pitt walks along, which is the element. He would probably take my wife, and I would be left alone. That would be an example of a single displacement reaction. Usually, but not always, a metal and an acid goes to some sort of gas and a salt. For instance, magnesium and hydrochloric acid yields magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. That would be an example of a single displacement reaction. Now, let's say there's, um, here would be an example of a double displacement. Double displacement is usually when two compounds form to make two new compounds. Um, an indication of this not always would be a precipitator solid forming. Um, an example, imagine if you have like A plus B goes plus C and D goes to A and D plus C and B. So for example, silver nitrate, which is a compound, plus sodium chloride, which is a compound, would produce silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. The anions uh, basically switch places. So you can think of this as like the couple over here might be my wife and I, and then this might be Angela, Jolie, and Brad Pitt. So then Brad would steal my wife from me, so he'd be the sodium, he'd go with the nitrate, and then of course um, Ange Angela, Jolie would hook, hook up with me. Sorry for that mental image, but I'm just trying to make you consider that this is like double displacement, like two people going on a double date and they switch partners. Now, then there are some special categories. Um, for instance, uh, 
decomposition reactions. Carbonates usually form metal oxides and carbon dioxide. One case would be calcium carbonate. Now this is limestone yields calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Why is this important? Well, in the olden days, if you wanted to knock down the castle, uh, which was made out of, out of strong marble and limestone, what they would try and do is start a fire and near the marble. Then what would happen is the marble would start to break down to calcium oxide, which is not as strong as calcium carbonate, and give off carbon dioxide. A couple other special cases that you'll need to know. Uh, nitrates. Um, usually anything with a nitrate, silver nitrate, potassium nitrate, would decompose uh, to the nitrite, which would be one less oxygen plus O2. So potassium nitrate yields potassium nitrite and O2. Also explains why this is in explosives, because again, if you have a lot of O2 hanging around in a match, kaboom. Okay, next one, um, chlorates. Okay, again, these go to the metal chlorides plus O2, and again, these are often very explosive because you got a lot of O2. Nickel 2 chlorate yields nickel 2 chloride, and, and oxygen, again, this would be O2 gas. And finally, last but not least, um, would be the bicarbonates would form the metal carbonates, water, and carbon dioxide. And this is the last one that we did. Okay, so what's the assignment with this assignment? What I would like you to do is to go back, look at any three examples except for the sodium bicarbonate yields sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide, um, and write out the balance equations. And that pretty much does it.